Hello YouTube, this is the Jimmy Kieran Show, episode 170. Now, about two or three years ago, I reviewed Super Mario Galaxy 1 for the Nintendo Wii. And finally, the time has now come to review the sequel, Super Mario Galaxy 2. So, let's get started. Right, YouTube, that's my Nintendo Wii, so let's start with you. Now, Super Mario Galaxy 2 is a very good 3D platformer. Although, I'm not so sure if I can call this game a sequel for one basic reason. Mario Galaxy 2, to me, it doesn't really feel like a game. It feels more like an expansion pack to the um, previous game. A very big and quite expensive expansion pack at that, though. But it is still a very good game, even though it is more like an expansion pack than a game. We're well, starting from the game. It's pretty basic, and they barely mention the first one at all. I mean, towards the end of the game, you you do get to see Rosalina, and you do get to see the um, giant space station again, but there is, isn't that much mention of the first game at all. Story for the same, the story for the game is very, very simple. Basically, Princess Peach has been kidnapped, and it's Mario's job to save her once again. Same as usual. The graphics of this game, the graphics of this game also look really good. The game itself looks a little bit better than the first one. The mode for this game is also pretty good. Uh, if you have a second Wii mode, your friend can jump in and help you on your quest. He can um, kill enemies for you. Stop enemies for you, pick up star bits for you, and also shoot star bits. There is one level in particular towards the end of the game. If you do not have a second player, it is almost impossible to beat this level. You know which one I'm talking about if you played the game. Controls to the game, well, the controls to the game are also very good. Uh, Anal stick moves you around. Z button crouches, you can move whilst crouching. C button does nothing. A jumps. Let's A tries to do double jump. One, two, three jump. You can do a triple jump. Let's A and Z do a butt stomp. Shit them up to a spin, which is one of your main attacks. And run Z and A to do a long jump. Press B and point the screen to shoot star bits. One and two don't seem to do that much. And pause, bring up the pause menu. Uh, when it comes to controlling Yoshi, the controls are quite different. Let me just go find a little fella. Should be around here somewhere. Oh, there he is, as usual, sleeping his egg. Yoshi controls really well. Press jump, he jumps. If you hold down the air whilst you jump, you can hover, which really helps. Yoshi can jump pretty high. You can move really fast. You can eat enemies with his tongue by just targeting with your pointer, which works really well. I was on YouTube once and this guy kept complaining about the uh, way that Yoshi attacks with bashing the point is stupid, but. I have no problem with whatsoever, I think it's alright. The arrow buttons on the D-pad, my player is Mario on his own, or with Yoshi, is your camera. And to get off Yoshi's, hold Z, then visit A, he'll backflip off him. Uh, one of Yoshi's best abilities, that I really like, is the tongue grapple, just press B. His tongue can, and point to the grappling. And Grab on things. As per usual, Yoshi can eat almost anything in the game and he's very, very good at it. Do 
The game for the game. Well, the game for the game is very good. The game itself is really, really long. You wouldn't believe how many stars are in this game. There's a grand total of 242 power stars. This is a very, very long game. It's probably even longer than Donkey Kong 64. The uh, first game is absolutely awesome. There's a wide variety of tracks from the first Mario Galaxy. There's also a few new ones, and there's also some tracks from some of the 2D Mario games. But the Gustav Ice game, the Gustav Ice game, the story is good, the cutscenes are good. The game for this game is fantastic. The levels themselves, most of them are really good. One of my favourite levels is the remake of um, of the level in Mario 64, I can't remember what it's called, but I think it's called Swamp's Fortress or something like that. In this game it's called the Throwback Galaxy, but by far that is definitely my favourite level because it's you got a really nice nostalgic feeling to it. Uh, for some bizarre reason, Nintendo has also packaged a DVD with this game to teach people how to play the game. Personally, I think the DVD is a bit pointless and you get the same thing if you just read the instruction manual, but I suppose it makes the game accessible to everybody. And it, it's kind of a nice feature, but it's still pointless, I think. still in there, I just put through the comfort iron. They're usually gold, but I've already found them all. Throughout the game, the comfort irons are, are just a little collectible. You don't have to get them, but I think if you collect a certain number of them, you can unlock comic stars and unlock more stars in the actual game itself. So they do have a purpose, but they're not mandatory. If you want to beat the game itself without collecting all the stars, you only need 70. Whee! Uh, throughout each level there are these checkpoints. Some of them are quite useful because some of the levels are quite long and they help out as far as pacing is concerned. One moment. Alright, so about you two, I just have to go sort something out. Now back for the view. <laughs> Pick up where I left off. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is, is the bosses. Some of the bosses in the game are quite difficult and some of them are really, really easy. Uh, Bowser himself He's not too difficult, although he can be su quite surprising at times, especially in the final battle of the game where he decides to come back from the dead. Um, one of my favourite bosses was this one boss where you had to go underneath the platform and butt stomp these panels, and when you stomp the panels, you can knock him over to his belly. That was a good boss. Mario can also wall jump just like in the previous games. You just jump onto a wall and you're away. Although it can be quite tricky to master. Chow time! 
with the great Smack Yoshi, he also took in projectiles and throw back the enemy. Like the um, boomerang bros, Facebook, the boomerang that you can just scoot in and um, give them a taste of their own medicine. Also, to help you through the game, if you're a little bit inexperienced at Mario games, in certain levels and on certain puzzles, there's hint TVs. And these hint TVs can help you with certain puzzles. I've only had to use them a, a few times. And they're pretty useful, I think they're a pretty good feature. Uh, another feature I was also in New Super Mario Bros is in the game as well, but only in certain levels. The feature is called the Cosmic Guide, and in certain levels and on certain stars, if you die a certain number of times, the game will give you the option to talk to Rosalina. If you talk to Rosalina, she will possess Mario and do the star for you. This will count as you beating the level, but instead of a gold power star, you'll get a bronze power star. And obviously you have the opportunity to go back to this level and try again if you if you wish. But the um, Cosmic Guide the, and the Hint TVs. I never used the Cosmic Guide because I like to play the game myself. But the um, but the Hint TVs were pretty useful. The DVD itself, I watched it for only one reason, that was for um, a laugh because I wanted to see how basic and how funny this could actually be. And the DVD, it does teach you how to play the game, but in such a way that it's kind of stupid and it's also funny at the same time. So it's sometimes good to watch for a laugh. The Cosmic Guide itself, I never used it because I like a challenge. Um, the next thing I want to talk about YouTube is the hub world. The hub world in this game is tiny. It's just Mario's face made into a spaceship. There isn't really that much to do on here. Um, let me give you a, a brief summary tour. Um, if you step on this you can access your level maps. I use pick levels with your analog stick and press A. You zoom out, you can um, pick your galaxy or your world. That's all that little pads for. This guy here. He doesn't really do that much. This signpost, so you can keep track of all your stars and all your comp medallions. You can also do this by pressing pause and look at your stars list. Throughout the game, this is the mail tour. He will um, give you letters from certain characters. Um, some letters will be from characters in the game asking for help. If you respond to those letters, you'll be rewarded with more stars. You also get letters from Rosalina, who most times she'll give you some star bits so you can unlock levels. And there's also levels from Pri there's also letters from Princess Peach, and most time her will be some light. Letters from her will be some lives. This green door lets you switch from Mario to Luigi. Luigi is unlocked pretty early on in the game and he controls quite well, although he doesn't stop as well as Mario does and he can be a little bit slippery. But he can jump higher than Mario, which is a plus. Anyway, YouTube, I ran out of time. The next part, I hope to finish off the review. See you then.